Hello everyone, welcome back to this material characterization course. In the last class, we just uh, reviewed the electron optical systems and its governing principles and electron lens design and it is analogy with the light optical system. And I mentioned that uh, we will discuss the aberrations in this class. And as I mentioned in the fundamentals of the optical system, we have gone through all the types of aberrations which the glass lens will exhibit. Similar type of aberrations will also the electron optical system will encounter. And then since we have already seen them in much more uh, detailed manner about what is the each aberration and its definition, I will just mention how this is taken care in this electron optical system and then we will take up some few examples and some of the numerical significance of a spherical and chromatic aberrations. As we all know, the spherical aberration is very important and inherent to these lenses in light optical glass lenses as well as in the electromagnetic lenses. And we also appreciate that this is one particular aberration which directly influence the resolution of the microscope and we will see them in little more detail. So, now we will go to this uh, lens separation and optical resolution with regard to this electron optical system. You look at this schematic, what you are just seeing is a, a lens plane and where you have the range of uh, alpha that is aperture angle and then you see that uh, look at this ray tracing path and then each ray is focusing at different different direction and basically and this is a region we say that uh, the disk of uh, least confusion and then and if you look at this, all this pair of rays intersecting the image plane at a different point and then eventually you see this uh, aberration disk in the image plane. So, the point you have to remember here is, it is a general schematic which is shown here and uh, whatever the aberration we talk about whether it could be a simple astigmatism to chromatic to spherical aberration, all what all these aberrations they do to this light ray or electron beam, they have they are directing this electron beam into a different focal point, whether it is on axis or off axis that we have seen. So, if you just think of all the aberrations which impair the resolution of the optical system or electromagnetic lens system, it is the total combination of all these aberrations put together. So, you can consider this schematic a general schematic where you see this the distance delta naught is the defocusing condition and this is also considered as the disk of least confusion and then you see the aberration disk which we have already seen in the beginning and then you see that uh, delta optimum with associated with the electron lens in general. So, the resolution becomes the total aberration depending dependent to a large degree on the half angle subtended from the image by the lens aperture as designated alpha. This we have already seen. So, I want to emphasize again, please have uh, 
make sure that you understand this. So you have the, it is not a completely focused condition, this could be because of uh, any aberration, but this is the, the smallest distance that is delta naught is the least confusion. And then, and if you look at this delta optimum, which is much larger in the image plane. <coughs> so, you may see that you are uh, at the defocusing condition, your image resolution is better. Is that so? It may be the case we will see in the coming slide. So, let me uh, read out some few introductory remarks for this uh, aberrations of the electron optical or electromagnetic lens systems. The ultimate resolution of the object signal is influenced by mechanical flaws in the lens design which produce imperfect lens field, pole piece fabrication and also by mutual repulsion of electrons at constricted points that is a focal points, lens apertures etcetera along the optical axis particularly the focal points. The variation in the electron energy at various points in the beam give rise to image distortion and contribute generally to loss of contrast and sharpness. So, this is the fundamental point which you have to keep in mind. Whatever happens in the electromagnetic lens system, it is the variation in the electron energy at various points in a beam give rise to image distortion and, and causes the loss of contrast and sharpness. The lens aberrations primarily responsible for deviations in electron ray intersections and concomitant loss in image clarity may be classified as geometrical aberrations, chromatic aberrations and field effect aberrations including a space charge of the electrons. We will see one by one and uh, the space charge of electrons we, we, we did not discuss in the uh, light optical system, we will see in this system how it is affecting the resolution. So, it is just a, a recap of what we have seen, the type of uh, aberrations, the, this, the schematic I have just put it everything in one image because we have already seen them in much more detail in when we discussed in the light optical systems. So, the first schematic shows the, the coma effect and the second schematic describes the curvature of field and third schematic C is astigmatism and the fourth one is lens distortion and the fifth one is spherical aberration. I will not describe them in detail because you have already seen it. If you have a doubt, you can go back to that uh, lecture and then look at all this uh, indi individual defects and then make yourself clear, clear, clear about this. And it is the same thing. I will only discuss about how these defects are taken care in this electron optical system. In terms of coma, it can be eliminated almost entirely in electromagnetic lens by the establishment of field conditions giving rise to unity magnification. And in, in terms of curvature field, it is reduced by properly shaping the electromagnetic lens field. The astigmatism on the other hand is correctable by inserting stigmators in the appropriate lens system to compensate the non-circularity of the image beam profile on the image plane. So, what is stigmator? The stigmator containing symmetrical arrangements of tiny ferromagnets or suitable permanently magnetized components acts to circularize the image. And uh, the lens distortion, the correction of coma in an electromagnetic lens 
and currently eliminates the lens distortions as well. So, what you should appreciate here is in electro optical systems, the most of your aberrations is controlled by the field strength and the field distribution. In, in an optical system, we just all these aberrations were compensated with the an additional glass lens here. Since all the your focal length everything is controlled by the field, uh, field strength and your aberrations are also controlled by the appropriate field strength and its distribution in the appropriate lens system. So, we will see the other aberrations. Spherical aberration, the correction of the spherical aberration rests in the design of lens, lenses with special field distributions for allowing smaller aperture angles to be attained with the simultaneous reduction in CS, possibly by a design aperture aimed at producing less symmetrical lens fields. So, as I mentioned, this particular aberration is very important and uh, how, how much we can reduce this will finally determine the resolution of the optical system and then uh, we will see them and its uh, numerical significance in a few minutes. And uh, chromatic, chromatic aberration which is caused by the fluctuations occurring in the lens coils becomes simply a problem of electro electronic regulation as do fluctuations in the cathode and anode potentials. To this extent, this defect is correctable. However, the energy losses resulting from the inelastic scattering in the object cannot be dealt with to the same extent and it is overcome by operation the system at higher voltages. The another important uh, aspect of this electron optical system is a space charge effect. What is this space charge effect? At the focal points along the electron optic axis, the concentration of electrons into small volumes produces a strong mutual repulsive action and a concomitant tendency of the beam to spread from the point of constriction that is from the point of focus. This produces an effective reduction in the associated accelerating potential of the electrons and they lose velocity. And this problem is somewhat less at very high voltage and where lower beam currents are employed with an associated low beam intensity. So, this particular effect is uh, especially belong to this electron optical system and you have to remember the aberrations which we talk about and its effect on resolution, we simply assume that or we simply do not consider the, the specimen condition. For example, whatever the aberration we talk about, we assume that the specimen is pure and it does not have any contaminating. Uh, I mean constituents in it or it does not react with the beam and then produce its own uh, new product that will impair the resolution. So, all this the treatment which we are talking about or the, the compensating effect we talk about assuming that the specimen is in the ideal condition. Okay. So, in the the, the mathematical treatment which we are going to look at is also in the similar manner that we are not taking the specimen effect. That means, we assume that specimen is ideally prepared and it does not have any contamination or any other uh, reacting constituent with the electron beam. So, now we will just take up this uh, two spherical, I mean two aberrations. First, we will talk about spherical aberration.
So, what I am trying to write here is the image forming lens or the critical beam forming lens in an electron microscope or micro probe system in the objective lens. We always talk about the objective lens, whether it could be a any image forming lens or it could be an electron uh, forming lens, I mean in an electron microscope critical beam forming lens or it could be electron micro probe analyzer. We always are concerned about the aberrations of objective lens. We can describe the disk of confusion caused by the spherical aberration as that is delta S, SP delta naught is general notation for disk of least confusion. Here delta SP is it is exclusively caused by the spherical aberration can be represented as two times C s alpha cube where C s the spherical aberration coefficient which is also given by gamma naught C s equal to gamma naught times V naught divided by N i whole square bracket square. So, this expression you are familiar with already, this is potential, this is number of uh, coil, this is current, which is which is observed to be proportional to the square of the focal length. So, this can be written as C s equal to gamma naught focal length of objective lengths and it is the potential divided by n i whole square. where gamma is a constant ranging from hundred for strong lens. and 150 for V peaks. Gamma is a constant ranging from 100 for a strong lens, 150 for weak lens. So, similarly we will see this uh, chromatic aberration
So, as we discussed earlier, it depends on electron energy loss. and Lenz current fluctuation delta i and is expressed as delta chromatic disk of confusion created by chromatic aberration can be related to 2 times chromatic C C alpha delta C r equal to 2 times C C that is uh, chromatic aberration coefficient alpha times delta V by V naught whole square plus delta I by I whole square to the power half that is square root of the whole expression. We write uh, where C C chromatic aberration coefficient which is also given by C C equals gamma naught prime focal length of objective where gamma naught prime is a constant varying from one five to one. for strong or weak lens action respectively. So, you have this uh, chromatic aberration constant is equal to gamma naught prime times focal length of objective and gamma naught prime is the constant varying from 0 0.5 to 1 for a strong or a weak lens action respectively. So, now what we will do is we will see that uh, how all this aberrations We will now try to uh, write some expressions for object resolution and then image quality involving all this uh, operations which we talk about. So, we will see that uh,
So, what I have written is as a consequence of the uncertainty principle, the exact image displacement of electrons diffracted from the object area will be subjected to uncertainty of discrete line displacement in the object of the order delta x which is equal to L L that is list of least uh, confusion line to line which can be written as lambda divided by 2 sin alpha. You are familiar with this expression and it can be assumed like this. So, I read out again because of the uncertainty principle, the electrons diffracted from the object area will be subject to uncertainty of discrete line displacements in the object. So, if alpha is 0 0.012, 0 0.001 gradient, then we can write uh, delta L L is 0.5 lambda divided by alpha. For example, you can write uh, in a typical electron microscope alpha is 0 0.003 at uh, 100 kV, your delta L L could be roughly about 7 angstrom. This to give you a, an idea, a typical case where you see that delta L, how to appreciate this. So, now we will include the lens aberrations and see how this expression is modified, where
So, what I have done is where the lens separation included in the real electron optical system, the ultimate resolution is given by considering in addition to the diffraction uncertainty, the chromatic and spherical aberrations, the combination of the error disk radii that is delta optimum in the image plane is found from delta optimum equal to square root of delta L L square plus delta S P by 2 whole square plus delta chromatic divided by 2 whole square. We consider limit of two points. See, we always talk about uh, point resolution as well as line resolution. You can consider these two. If you consider two points in the image plane, the optimum and the resolution limit of these two points is delta p p that is point to point this cuff conclusion is this also you are familiar with, you have already seen this, where again we could include spherical and chromatic So, if you include this, the spherical and chromatic aberration expression into this, the point to point disk of this confusion, then you obtain delta optimum point equal to square root of delta P P square plus delta S P by 2 whole square plus delta chromatic divided by 2 whole square.
So, these basic expressions are uh, further modified by several researchers and then uh, we can write uh, one more general expression for uh, disk of least confusion. I will we will talk about all this uh, much more detail how this is really going to affect the practical resolution when we look at the actual microscopic operation, but you should appreciate that uh, the importance of this two uh, spherical and chromatic aberrations how it really influence the resolution limit of the optical system.
So, what uh, before we just look at uh, this expression, if you recall this uh, the ray diagram which I showed in the beginning of this class, where you see that delta naught was defined as a disk of least confusion in a defocused plane. And then if you look at the image plane where delta optimal where on the image plane which is much larger than the d naught, delta optimum was much larger than in the array disk we described which is larger than the d naught. So, that clearly implies that if you reduce the, the field strength then you will automatically get the better resolution. So, to emphasis this point, this to get an expression for delta naught itself that is what we have uh, tried to show here. The minimum constriction of the beam described as the disk of least confusion on the defocused plane on the optical axis. The diameter of the disk of least confusion is given by delta naught equal to square root of 4 times delta p p square plus C s alpha cube divided by 2 whole square plus C c alpha delta v by v naught whole square, where delta p p is equal to 0 0.61 times lambda by alpha and where C s and C c are the spherical and chromatic aberration coefficients respectively, delta v is voltage change for a acceleration potential V naught and alpha is an objective aperture angle. So, in this class I hope you have at least uh, have some basic idea about how this aberrations in an electron optical system is considered and its influence on the resolution of the image and the microscope. So, now we will now move on to the actual uh, electron optical system, especially we will start with a scanning electron microscopy and its working principle and its application from the next class. Thank you.